Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Are we gonna be the baddies? I think we're gonna be the baddies. Hope to wield the Rage Hound. Oh yes. Legion Warboss, get in there. So let's see if we can draft a nice model red deck. Well, I don't see any red cards. Cathartic Reunion doesn't really count here. Ruts or a Black Splash for Mayhem Devil. Has a bit of synergy with Torbran. Could also go for a White Splash for Reinforcements. Oracle's okay, I guess, if we just need a 2-drop. Bit of synergy if we've got some tokens. And a synergy with Mayhem Devil if we do end up red-black. Alright, Phoenix of Ash and Scorching Dragonfire, both excellent. I'll take the Phoenix. So we could be... Heavy red with a light black splash if we get some dual lands. Or we can uh, drop the Mayhem Devil and just end up moderate. Seems good. There was also a Triome for a bit of black mana fixing. But I'll still take a Skewer over it. So I still could use some extra 1 and 2 drops. This is a deck that can easily get away with fewer lands as well. If we keep the curve low. Claim could be kind of nice with uh, the Dark Dweller Oracle. Don't think Ox is gonna get escaped very often in this deck. Siege Gang could be a nice curve topper. Diplomacy can also be okay if we end up aggressive enough. If we're planning on splashing a bit of black. Sprite Dragon, nice if we want to splash blue. I'll go with the Siege Gang, great synergy with Torbran as well. And we did wheel a Rage Hound. Angrath could also be okay, Act of Treason synergizes with Oracle. But again, we just need enough 2 drops for the deck to be functional. Playcrafter, also a bit of synergy with uh, Mayhem Devil. Might play a Reunion as a way to discard extra lands in the late game. Can also put more stuff in the graveyard for escape for uh, Underworld Rage Hound and Phoenix of Ash. So what are some of the best Monorad cards? Rekindling Phoenix comes to mind, Goblin Chain Whirler. And then we mostly want a lot of 1-drops. Fanatical Firebrands in the cube, Scorch Spitter. There's a couple more. Amber Cleave also a great one, Annex. Alright, we did wield the Triome in case we want to splash black. Can even fix for the white for reinforcements. Although we're probably not going to play all three colors. Well, it's not an exciting first pick, but uh, I'll take it. Ooh, wow, Bone Crusher is definitely one of the best cards. Fight with Fire could also be okay. Banner is another one drop. Can maybe hope to wheel it. Frenzy. I'm in. Could also play Crystalline Giants. Infuriate as a pump spell. Weaponize could synergize with the Claim the Firstborn. But I think Frenzy is probably good enough. Just gotta make sure we keep the curve low. Or I could take Godzilla and hope to wield the Frenzy if we're the only mono red deck. Nah, we'll probably still wield something useful here. Kill Fiends, nice. Probably take the Hellkite. 
don't see myself playing Sparring Construct, even though we need one drops. So we might end up slightly higher curve than I would like, which does make a card like Frenzy a bit worse too. So just gotta prioritize those two mana creatures. Probably not gonna be splashing black at this point, but we'll see. Maybe we'll play the sword. There is also Priest if we wanted to end up in the red-black sacrifice archetype. Could still be okay to pivot here. What are the chances that I want to play sword? It's still an okay card, but it does re require me having enough cheap creatures to equip. I think I take Captivating Crew over Banefire, we already have Devil's Play. And the ability is also kinda nice if we can combine it with a Sack Outlets. Yeah, definitely need to lower the curve, although we haven't passed any cheap creatures so far. I'll take a Friendship. There's also Witch's Oven to combo with uh, Claim the Firstborn, but... This pack had nothing to begin with, so that's fine. I guess we did pass that one Goblin Banner at, at some point, yeah. There we go, perfect. Infuriate vs. Weaponize. Think I'm leaning Infuriate, especially nice with Kiln Fiend, Mentor. Weaponize mainly good with Claim the Firstborn and the uh, Captivating Crew, but that's six mana before we can do both. Would also be nice with friendships, that's true. Take a Sparring Construct, just in case. Hopefully I won't need it. Alright, we wield a Priest, should we want to splash it but didn't even get any mana fixing, so seems unlikely. Lightning Strike's perfect. So still hoping for a card like Annex, Amber Cleave, Rekindling Phoenix, Goblin Chain Whirler. Probably take Shield Breaker. It's not an exciting 2-drop, but it does have some utility. Immolating Inferno is going to be difficult to pull off since we have very few legendary creatures. Torbran might be the only one. Alright, so if we were interested in splashing black, there is a temple, but I think at this point that's not going to happen. So there's a crash through, which is great with Kiln Fiends. And there's a Weasel back as a one drop, which is actually not too bad. I don't think this is a an outcast deck. Like we kinda wanna stop at land five if possible. And we're not ramping. It's still nice if the game does drag out, but it's not our primary game plan. Take a rat cap. Not gonna have the mana to cast Drakuseth. The red cap melee not as good in this deck as it would be in a more low curve red deck. Because we don't often want to sack our lands, but uh key to Lava Runner, definitely a nice addition. So we were able to lower the curve somewhat. Could still use some two mana creatures. Probably not gonna play Triome. Probably aiming at 15, 16 lands. Ooh, nice. Perfect. The Enchanted Carriage could also be okay if we needed more top ends, but definitely prefer the Pyromancer here. Servants, pretty good too. 
So it's not a perfect mono red aggro deck, but it's definitely a good one. Missed a few of the key cards. A rigging runner, sure. So what are my cuts? Maybe Cathartic Reunion. Uh, maybe one of the five drops. Together, we'll create great things, you and I. Didn't think I'm playing Electromancer, but it doesn't matter at this point. Didn't think Sahili makes it. Sigiled Sword, I can take it or leave it. Uh, Hellkite and Siege Gang, probably only play one of the two. And then uh, could be a 15 land deck if we cut a 5 drop. Reunion also a card I don't need as much if we play fewer lands. It's mostly useful at discarding lands in late game. Devil's Play could also be cut, although it does give us a bit of additional reach. So let's cut Hellkites. Need to make one more cut. Maybe Sword is a bit too slow. Yeah, let's cut the Sword. And then 15 lands. Castle would have been nice in the mana base, but oh well. Alright, we'll need a third land, but... I'm down. Siege Gang and Frenzy in the same hand is also not ideal. The animation didn't even finish and Kinnon's already dead. Alright, that was a fast one. Alright, we're on the play. Decent curve. Bone Crusher, Stomp, and then uh, maybe a War Boss on three. Or we can just shield breaker here. Let's see if they have a removal spell here. That's a scatter. Ah, it's too bad. So, next turn I could play Clockwork Servants, hold Bone Crusher Giant to use the adventure first. Why not bait with Servants? Because Warboss gets exponentially better the earlier you play it. Could also go for Rage Hound plus Stomp, which is slightly more mana efficient. And adds more power to the boards, most importantly. So 
So I can Servant, if I draw land, I can Friendship. If I don't, I'm considering just using melee and sacking a land. Or I can play Bannerets. Opponent's probably trading here for Shield Breakers, my guess. Or maybe the Rage Hound, actually, if they don't have a bigger blocker next turn. I think I just kill it still. Hope that they don't have like a Lyra Dawnbringer or a Ritual of Sith. They don't seem to have a sweeper at least. Five mana spark harvests. That's fine by me. So this turn I can friendship plus bannerts or giant plus bannerts, which is probably slightly better. If they didn't have a sweeper last turn, they probably don't have one this turn. Alright, sweet. On the play once again. This hand relies very heavily on a warball surviving and drawing a third land. But once I find land 4, we've got Frenzy to keep things going. It's definitely not an amazing hand, but we're on the play. If I draw cheap creatures, it's fine. If I draw lands, it's fine. I'll try it. Now I could consider casting Devil's Play for zero, just to put it in the graveyard for when I cast Frenzy so I still have access to it. That might be a bit drastic, but there's definitely a sequence where I want to do that. I think I'll wait one turn. If I don't draw anything next turn, I might just fire it off for one. Uh, I did draw lands. That actually makes me want to use it even more. Torbrand's great. Now I could Devil's Play for two before playing Warboss, or I can play Warboss, hope it survives, and next turn maybe clear some blockers with uh, Skewer or Devil's Play, or if I draw land for Torbrand, I can attack into it. Now they probably take Torbrands, my guess. Could maybe see them take Frenzy if they have a lot of spot removal in hand. Those are definitely the more powerful cards. I have Skewer and Devil's Play that can both kill the Enforcer, so it doesn't make a ton of sense for them to take it. Takes a Devil's Play anyway. Is this a Sacrifice Spark Harvest situation? Alright. Surprise they took the Devil's Play. I guess they were worried that I can flash it back as well. So it's gonna be a while before I cast Frenzy. Opponent on... They can be playing Mono Black with Field of the Dead, that doesn't make a ton of sense. So they must be missing a color. A shock. Okay. Right. Surrender your agony to me. 
self mill, so they are blue black. Do I ignore Ashok? I kind of want to, or I could kill Ashok with uh, Phoenix here. If I play Torbrand. It's 27 cards. I think I just go face. We can potentially deal a ton of damage next turn if Torbrand survives. Next turn they can flash back Edicts. A lightning strike for five damage here. And then I could skewer for five and attack with both and if they have nothing they're dead. Alright, GG's. Our first pick paid off. Yeah, going back to that agonizing remorse decision. Not sure that uh, taking Devil's Play was the right decision. Alright, we're on the draw for once. It was bound to happen, but we've got a nice curve. I think I hold Lava Runner since we might be able to haste it in the future. And start with the Weasel back. Steel Overseer. <laughs> That's dirty. Now I don't have to kill it now, but if they have another artifact I might regret it. And I can Lava Runner 2 here. Don't mind baffling end on my one drop. Tough decision. Not sure which is better here. Takes the weasel back. Next turn I can double two drop or play crew. Opponent stuck on two lands. Ouch. Let's go with double two drop here. This is potentially worse if they go swamp into Golden Demise, because then this would have survived. But it's better if they have a spot removal spell. So they drafted a, an interesting artifact synergy deck. Probably just kill Emery, Pump Phoenix. And then if they do have a sweeper, I could maybe escape Phoenix. Gotta watch out for Settler Wreckage now. Don't want to get punked out by it. All right, let's skip the attack step altogether. Did 
this looks good. Could use a few extra instants and sorceries to enable Kiln Fiend and Lava Runner. Probably play Kiln Fiend over Shieldbreaker. Don't expect my opponent to necessarily have artifacts, but Kiln Fiend's a pretty scary threat for them, even if we don't actually have any ways to enable it. Ooh, Thief of Sanity. That's annoying. So, deal one. Got to draw some removal soon. Hopefully they mill over a Devil's Play that I can cast out of the graveyard. Two two first ranking Rigan Runner, actually pretty annoying blocker here. Can't really attack. My only play is play Captivating Crew and hope it somehow survives an entire turn cycle. This might get countered, or we might see a Brazen Borrower end of turn. Thief of Sanity especially effective against the Modern Red deck, where they can find a lot of cheap spells. So they get to make sure they can play the card while still deploying their hand. So they'll be able to make use of every single extra resource here. Frenzy goes to the graveyard. Forbidden Friendship does pump up my Lava Runner. Infuriates. Alright. So I can steal Thief and then still cast Infuriates. Send everyone. This figure. So they're gonna attempt to block crew here. So I could save Kill Fiend or save Captivating Crew. I think Captivating Crew is the card that I care about the most. Immortal Sun, you say? Sure. Don't know if the game is going to last long enough for it to matter. But yeah, this is kind of the case of Thief of Sanity running away with the game. Sadly, didn't have an answer for it. They even get to keep the Bone Crusher Giant, so I don't get to cast it. Although, they'll probably have a hard time casting the Giant themselves. So now what? Points at 14. I could attempt to steal Thief again. Just attack with Thief, keep crew on defense to hold off Rigging Runner. 
could play Mortal Sun and stay back, but then I'm essentially at one, and I'm dead to any interaction. So now my hope is that I attack. I could also play Shield Breaker as a blocker. And if I mill something better with Thief, maybe I can use it. Dungeon Geists, interesting. Could be useful. It is a blocker for Thief next turn. Alright, that's gonna do its GG's. Well, at least we got to have some fun with the opponent's Thief of Sanity as well. On the play with a decent hand. No way to enable a rigging runner on turn one. So I guess we'll just run it out there. No pun intended. I guess it was somewhat intended. Lovestruck Beast could definitely be an annoying blocker next turn. So what to do, what to do. I do give the opponent the opportunity to trade the token for Firebrand, so maybe I should just not attack with it. But I don't have any other 1 damage burn spells that I can combine with Firebrand and Skewer to kill the beast, I don't think. Let's just smash. So they have something else in hand. And what could it be? Ram through the war boss, that's too bad. So I think I'm just going face at this point. How close are they to escaping Uro? Not very. So I can just pump Phoenix, attack with all they block runner. I have the option of using Skewer to finish off Beast, but I think I'm just going upstairs. Or I could play Kiln Fiend and next turn do the same. Uh, Skewer the Critics is a sorcery, so I can't first strike plus use Skewer to finish off the beast. I would have had to use it pre combats. So if Phoenix survives, we're okay. If they kill it, this could be tough. Or play a giant blocker. And it also enables Uro to be escaped next turn. That was a sad turn of events. Can put him to one, which isn't quite lethal. And next turn they get to gain three. So 
Maybe my hope is stop decking like a Devil's Play. I could double pump Phoenix too here. Just trades for Cavalier. But maybe that's the play. And then I can escape Phoenix. Gets back ramp through. So the hope is that they somehow don't escape Uro this turn, so we can burn them out with Phoenix and Skewer. Oh wow, opponent passes with ram through up, and we top deck Devil's Play. So let's move to combats. They're gonna ram through the Kiln Fiend most likely, I can Devil's Play for X equals 4 plus Cure for 7 burn. So I guess I don't even have to attack here. But they might have a counter spell which they tap out of if they ram through. So the question is, do I do anything pre-combat anyway? To pump the Kiln Fiends? I mean, both of my spells are sorcery speed, so I don't think it matters. Let's attack with everyone. Could also just Devil's Play for 5 if I connect for 1. Which might be better if they have a counter spell. They did let damage happen. Is there any point in like using Skewer as bait here? Now let's just do it for five. Cycles Tusker. All right, I think we got there. Oof. Yeah, not escaping Uru there. Definitely worked out in our favor. So there's an, definitely an advantage to holding burn spells sometimes. Because the opponent might not realize how low on life they actually are. But it turns out Devil's Play by itself was enough. On the draw. Um, Claim and melee aren't really a combo. I'm on the draw. I mean, this hand could still be okay. Just kind of depends what we draw in our first couple turns. If it's the mirror match, then melee is a pretty nice removal spell to have access to. Don't think Kiln Fiend's surviving here. So there is something to be said for not playing it, but I do want to curve into Phoenix next turn. And if I wait until turn 4 for Kiln Fiend, it's probably too late. Could also use Claim to give my own Fiend haste, which is a play that could come up. Alright, no removal, that's good. Phoenix. Wow, we could be hitting for a lot of damage here. Yeah, I kind of want to kill the Phoenix. So then I can't claim an attack with it. So is it better to just play my own Phoenix here? And not make use of the Kiln Fiend's ability? Yeah. I would really like two targets for the two one mana spells. Hopefully they don't respect Kiln Fiend here.
that's fine. Alright, so they must have some removal up. So what's my play now? Can just Devil's Play for two killing Rigging Runner, keep up Red Cap melee. And see what happens. I could claim the runner. And then f cl and uh, use Devil's Play to kill Phoenix of Ash. I guess that's also decent. And it also pumps the Lava Runner. And if they have a pump spell like Infuriate, I don't deal damage to the creature on defense. But to the tapped one, so they wouldn't be able to block with it. Heartfire sacking the rigging runner. Alright. You got it. Now they will be able to escape Phoenix potentially here. If they have one more card in graveyard. But I still get to pump Lava Runner. Weaponize could be scary. I'm probably just pumping Phoenix. Might get killed, but I don't have another great play available. Flashing back Devil's Play doesn't accomplish a whole lot. So now they can escape their Phoenix. I can red cap melee it, especially if they don't have another land to use weaponize. So I think I just kill it now so they don't get to enable any raid cards that they might have. Like their own, I guess they've already played Rigging Runner. Alright, center so opponent concedes. We were gonna escape Phoenix of Ash, hit him for five, potentially even more, and then Devil's Play flashback is lethal. All right, time for the final boss. On the play with uh, a decent draw. Frenzy, a nice curve topper to have with a relatively action light draw otherwise with a lot of uh, cheap creatures. Haven't really seen Frenzy in action yet. Could wait for runner until turn three. But I'm kind of in a hurry to empty my hand here. Let's hope for no discard effects. Rage Hound plus Oracle also kind of a combo. Right, I'll have a Siege Gang stranded in hand, I think that's fine. Ritual of Soot to clear the board. Guess I want to leave instants and sorceries in the graveyard if possible. Although I guess I have to exile everything. It's 
like we're playing Theros Limited here. Captivating crew. Dread Presence, definitely pretty good here, can gain the opponent some life. So I could activate crew, hit them for eights. I'm fine trading crew for Dread Presence if that's what they want. Or I can just keep going with the Frenzy and hope to find some more removal, maybe. Yeah, let's just keep going. Oh, that's perfect. And even a Lightning Strike. I don't have to use a Lightning Strike now, I could use it in my upkeep before drawing to pump the Kiln Fiends. Although mana efficiency could definitely matter. I'll pass for now, but we'll wait and see what we want to do with this Lightning Strike. Cavalier. Hmm, that's annoying. I guess in response I could kill the Gutter Bones. I guess that works, right? Kill Gutter Bones, they don't get to use this. And then I can just steal it next turn and kill them. Yeah. Alright, sweet. Good to see Experimental Frenzy in the last game do its uh, thing as well. Alright, Monoret is the truth in this cube. Although I do think you want to open one of the payoff cards in the first couple packs to really dive into it, because you could easily end up with a pretty mediocre monoret deck otherwise. So cards to look out for, Torbran, Anax, Ambercleave, Experimental Frenzy, uh, what are some other good ones? Goblin Chain Whirler, uh, Legion Warboss, Phoenix of Ash, those are kind of the ones that come to mind, Rekindling Phoenix as well. So if you open one of those early on, then it could be reasonable to dive right into it and uh, try and force kind of monorad, even if there are a few packs without any amazing red cards, and then just prioritize drafting a low curve, because if you end up with too many clunky cards, you're just going to lose to the slower value-oriented decks, which don't lack any powerful cards. Sweet. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.